Hello there, my name is Gareth Crispin and I'm a lecturer in practical theology here at Kiff College and I also head up the BAM programme, the BA in Mission and Ministry, which is training for mission and ministry in the real world of 21st century Britain. What we do is we bring biblical theological reflection into conversation with working with young people or children or families or older people. Let's hear from some of our current students about their experiences on the BAM programme. Hi, I'm Joe, uh, and I'm currently studying Issues Facing, which is where we look at the biggest issues facing youth, children and family today. Things like social media, pornography, disability, mental health, all the big topics that we can go back into our areas of ministry and we can help those around us get through and deal with. So this helps me in my area of mission. I work with children um, and things like the, the disability talk allow me to look back at my own church and reflect on the children there and their needs that they might need um, that I might have overlooked or just might not have thought about um, and how to, how to best suit them and how to help them through the events that we're doing. The problem-based learning is a unit where at the start of the week we're presented with a realistic but made-up church-based issue which develops as the week goes on and we have to respond to it um, theologically, biblically and pastorally. This is done by um, us getting into teams and throughout the week we will go like around the site trying to chat to other uh, members of staff who are like posing as characters in the scenario to try and unpack the issue um, and get to the bottom or to the best solution that we can. Uh, so this week is relevant for our ministry because it equips and prepares you for how to deal with real life problems when they arise within your ministry. So I'm a youth worker so it is um, equipping me and preparing me for how to deal with those, what people to have around me when the issues and problems arise and how to practically get to a solution. And also the essays and assignments are great because you can write them about stuff that's actually going on. For example, in my problem-based learning essay, I'm planning to write about a problem that I'm currently facing in my youth group. The BA Mission and Ministry is fully flexible. You can take the certificate over one or two years, a diploma over three or four, or the full degree be on site or off site. We've got people from all over the UK and beyond who come for our intensive weeks here at Cliff College in our wonderful campus here in Derbyshire. We're looking forward to meeting you and very much hope that you'll come and study at Cliff College. Life can be difficult when we stand alone, but there is power in. You can do better than that. Good evening, Cliffest. Thank you very much. How are we all doing? I hope you've had an amazing day. And we are here to praise tonight. We have an hour or so of praise, of worship. It's going to be amazing. We are joined by Tom Smith by Soul Survivor. So it's going to be time to get up, to get dancing, to praise God, and to have fun. But before we begin, I invite you to stand as we pray and prepare our hearts for worship. So just stand, hold out your hands, um, ready to welcome God into this space. Loving God, thank you so much that we can gather in this space together, whether we're online or in person. Um, and we just give so much praise to you. You are so awesome. You are so wonderful. You are the king above all kings. And we're just ready to worship you with all of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And I pray as we gather here today, you move us. May your spirit be among us, and may we be changed forever. I praise this in Jesus' awesome, glorious name. Amen.
Every heart 
Praise to Him tonight. Our God, the mighty one, we join with creation as we sing. Here we go, all the earth. Oh, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Father, we lift you up tonight. We give you the praise, the honor that you deserve. There is no one like you. You are so worthy of our praise. God, we invite your Holy Spirit to be here amongst us tonight. As we lift you up, would you come down? We worship your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take a seat for a moment or two. That would be great. Okay, am I on? No. Ah, there we go. They found me. Kind of. There's a... Shall I swap mics? Let me swap mics. Is that any better? Whee! I've got a microphone that works. Evening, everybody. Oh, what an amazing privilege to have Tom and the band with us this evening, uh, leading us in worship. We are so blessed and so thankful that you've made the effort to be with us. So we're excited. Um, 
Thank you, you guys, for coming back tonight. That's always a good sign that you've come back, and on the field is great. And what a beautiful way to worship in the open air with the trees and the beauty and the splendor around us to worship God. So that's amazing. Tonight's going to be slightly different in that worship will kind of have no end. Well, it will end at some point, um, but we're going to go into our fringe from worship. Tom's going to lead us an extended time of worship for an hour or so post the celebration time. And we're just going to continue to worship God together, to invite God's Spirit to, to meet us here in worship tonight. So um, you may want to just stay and worship with us or grab coffee, come back as we just continue to worship God together tonight. We're really excited uh, that we're going to be doing that. I have um, a task to do this evening, and that's to say thank you to somebody very special and very important in the life of Cliff College. I'd like to invite to the stage uh, someone you may know or you may never have met, but I'd like to invite to the stage Reverend Dr. Richard Jackson. So come to the stage. Would you give Richard a big round of applause, please? Um, we were just chatting backstage a little bit, and we, I wanted to go, your journey with us started in 2000, 2001, but you wanted to go backwards a bit. Oh, I do. Tonight, particularly, I want to go back 65 years, because 65 years ago, uh, I was here at the festival with a group from Darlington. Anyone here from Darlington? Yeah, uh -huh. from Darlington. Uh, that group, uh, I signed my decision card, a Cliff College decision card, at that point in time. And God has been with us ever since. So, 65 years. 65 years ago, made your decision to follow Jesus here. That's amazing. Um, so, you became staff at Cliff a little while ago, uh, which led you to found the Cliff College International Training Center in 2001. Just tell us how all that happened and how the birth of the Cliff College International Training Center happened. Well, it began really... Um, First of all, when my wife and I went to Sierra Leone from 1969 to 1979, we spent uh, 10 years in Sierra Leone in, as partners in mis ministry there. Uh, returned home. I'll leave Sar to say a little bit more about Sierra Leone later. I won't steal his thunder. But uh, when he wrote about us in Sierra Leone, he did say uh, when we met him as a young kid, um, we sent him home with Marmite sandwiches. In the village. I'm sure he really appreciated <laughs> the Marmite absolutely, sandwiches. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, we were in Sierra Leone for 10 years. We had returned here in ministry in Bristol and in Bramall near Manchester and Sale. But then uh, I came to Cliff College in 2000. But in the meantime, the Methodist Conference here had sent, uh, would we go back to Sierra Leone on a visit for the conference there in 2001? because Sierra Leone was just coming out of 10 years of troubles. And we went back to the conference there, met a lot of people we knew very well, and uh, all of them had gone through traumatic experiences. We think uh, Uganda's going through difficulties. The 1990s in Sierra Leone were pretty awful. Anyway, we went there on 2001 on the plane back, asking the Lord what we could do, really, in terms of helping Sierra Leone at that time. And I didn't bring it with me, I'm sorry, but I've got a sick bag off the aeroplane where I wrote down the beginnings of the Cliff College International Training Centre. Uh, on the has, sick you, has you used, used the sick bag before then? Uh, no. Okay, no that's uh, okay, that's my fine. wife could well have done because she didn't travel well. <laughs> but uh, no, it was, a, it was an empty one. It's still an empty one, but the front's been cut off now, so it's kept. So on the side of a sick bag on an aeroplane back from Sierra Leone was birthed the Cliff College Absolutely. International Training Centre. Absolutely. Just talk us through, uh, in just a couple of minutes, Richard, yep. the kind of work that the ITC has done over the... Because you kind of worked from 2001 to 2018. We wanted to do this moment a few years ago, but COVID has stopped us. Yep. Um, but from 2001 to 2018, where has the International Training Centre worked? What kind of work has it done? Could I very quickly just say, uh, principal after principal and people uh, in London World Church have been supportive of the whole program from the beginning. The only thing Howard Mellor said when I came back and had this bright idea, he said, well, as long as it's not going to cost us anything, we'll help you do it. Uh, but that's typical of principals. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, we, um, uh, 
Uh, began first of all in Sierra Leone, obviously, because that was where the inception was, and uh, we knew a number of people al already there. And uh, that off got off the ground very quickly, very positively, and uh, we began with the uh, ecumenically with leaders of all the churches who had gone through these traumatic experiences and uh, uh, began to, if you like, refresh them and help them and we provided book materials. The Irish Container Ministry helped us with books to get them out there and everything to do with that. So then uh, Nigeria heard what we were doing and they were at the point of looking again at how they were going to do ministry and mission and said, could we go to Nigeria? And uh, yes, uh, we got support from the college and everything else said, yes, we can go to Nigeria. And we began then also to do Nigeria. Well, most of you are aware that Sierra Leone is a little, very small country. Nigeria is huge and that has its own problems. But when people say, oh, aren't there problems in Nigeria? In fact, just this week, last week, the Nigerian leader of the Methodist Church was kidnapped. They had to pay ransom to get him released this last week. But Nigeria is huge, and certain parts of Nigeria are very, very difficult. But many parts are so committed to Christ and so involved with the church and strength of the Methodist Church, uh, they were great. Later on, after many years doing two-year course, a two-year program of training with each uh, person uh, in Nigeria and so on, uh, we then were invited to Uganda and did the same package in Uganda. And throughout, Cliff College has been at the heart of everything that we've done. And so around the world now, uh, certainly in those places where we've been, uh, they have Cliff College uh, certificates, they have Cliff College shirts, they are continuing in the kind of ministry that we are used to in Cliff College. We thank the Lord for that. Uh, if you really want to get into the story in full, uh, uh, the principal allowed me to bring 25 copies of the book uh, uh, detailing everything that's gone on from 2000 right up to the present day. And uh, for you people, rather than £10, it will cost you £5 from the bookshop. It's from the Cliff College stand if you want to get a copy of that. That's great. Uh, Richard, that's been an amazing uh, 18 years of ministry that's led you all over the world. And Cliff College Training Institute now has kind of engaged with over 17 nations doing different pieces of work and training for leadership and ministry and mission, all out of what you birthed back in 2001 on the back of a sick bag. Uh, we want to just tonight, because uh, we recognize things are different and the Training Institute is operating slightly differently uh, and you kind of stepped down from its formal leadership leadership, but we wanted to honor those 18 years and to say an amazing thank you for all the work that you did. We want to pray God's blessing on you. We're all going to pray for you in just a minute, yeah. but we've got a gift for you. <laughs> Hold on one second. I've got a bag back here. It's not a sick bag, don't worry. <laughs> I dread to think. Hold on, there's a card there you can open in a moment or two. Thank you. Um, but here, this is um, something special from our archives. which is actually a framed print of the first Wesleyan conference in 1744, Amazing. which we'd like to give you as a gift uh, to remember your time at Cliff, your work for the Methodist Church, your work overseas in the global Methodist family, which is a family of millions, 80 million people, the global Methodist family around the world want to say thank you to you for your work and for your ministry. Can we give Richard a big round of applause? And let's together just pray for Richard. Thank, thank you, Ashley. I'm honored uh, to receive the gift. Uh, Cliff College has been at the heart of our family's life for more than my time here with uh, the rest of the Jackson family. Some of the darling people may know them. Uh, it has been part of who we are, what we are, but above all, the Christ, all for Christ, and Christ for all is key to everything that we share together. Thank you. So let's pray together. Can you, would you stand with me as we pray? And if you feel able um, to just kind of reach out a hand to Richard, just to pray a blessing over him and his ministry and all that's happened across the world as a result of that, that Im immense training institute over the years and the lives that have been touched and, and the ministries that have been birthed as a result of that training and lives that have literally been transformed and reached for Christ as a result of that. Then let's just pray for Richard. Loving God, we thank you for Richard. We thank you for his ministry. We thank you for all that he brought to to the Cliff College Training Institute over 18 years. We thank you for the work across the globe 
for the lives that have been transformed and changed and reached for you. We pray for him. We pray your blessing upon him and your peace upon him. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue in worship, and as we sing, we are going to take our offering. We said last night uh, we were going to take an offering each night at festival. That's not because we want you to give every night, uh, but we recognize there are folk who are only here for the day, and we don't want to not give you the opportunity to give. So we're going to take an offering as we sing. The buckets will pass by. Uh, there are a, a number of ways you can give. You can give in the bucket. There's a, an offering point towards the back of the field where there are gift aid envelopes as well. There's an electronic uh, touch pad, pad for contactless giving and you can give on the website all those ways that you can give to festival it is really important we keep festival prices really low as you know because you're here we don't charge anybody under 18 to come to festival there's a there's a youth tent happening up there with amazing worship there's children's work at the bottom of this field right down there with the hundreds of kids enjoying worship and listening to the good news of Jesus that happens uh, because of your generosity so tonight as we worship would you give generously to the work of Cliff festival. Amen.
today Lord do great things in this place with all that we offer you will do great things in the name of Jesus Amen Thank you, Tom. We uh, are now going to have uh, some festival veterans uh, coming to the stage from across the Irish Sea. Uh, They've been here many times before. They've been performing all week. I saw them on the Orchard stage earlier. They were fantastic. Uh, Would you please give a big cliff welcome to Chris and Ross. Play it by ear. I have a box full of things that I understand. Basically, throughout my life, if there's anything I've learnt, anything I've come to understand, then I've put it in this box. So, for example, when I was young, I learnt to uh, tie my shoelaces. I'm quite adept at that, been doing it ever since. I'm quite good at it, so therefore it goes in the box. Uh, Let's see what else we have. We have a books, a Bob Hartman book actually, and I'll tell you what, I am very, very good at at sort of understanding these words, how the letters fit together, what it all means, so uh, reading books, that goes in the box because I understand it. Now let's see, let's see, Uh, aha, nuclear fission, okay, well I don't actually understand nuclear fission, but you get the idea, if I understand it, it goes in the box, it obviously means that God he goes in the box too, doesn't he? So God, 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 come on, God, God, get in the, God, get in the box, come on, God. There you go, God. Yes, I understand God. He's big, he's powerful, he's up there in the sky, he's all the way over there, and me, well, I'm all the way over here. Perfect, I understand it. Well, except that God he can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes. You see, he likes to get out of his box. And he comes closer to me. He goes, again and again. Look, li- listen, God, please don't take offense. But, um, well, look, I get it, okay? I, I understand now. Okay? Okay, so the thing is, before, okay, I didn't fully understand. But now I know. You're big, you're powerful, but you also want to be close to me. You want to be part of my life. And because I understand that, you can get back in your box. No, no, go no, on, no, God, no, get, no, get in no, your box. Come on, no, God, but, get, God, uh, don't fight it. Just get in the box. There we go. <sighs> yes, I understand God. Big, powerful, up there in the sky, but also wants to be part of my life. Although, wait a second. If he's trying to get close to me, maybe it's... Maybe it's because he's checking up on me. He's some sort of a judge with a big list of all the bad things I've done. That's a very, very long list. My goodness me, although although I suppose in, in fairness to him, he is God. I mean, he's holy and mighty and the Lord of Lords. I mean, fair enough. It's good that he would be angry with me. It's right that he would be angry with me. I would be angry with me, although... Sorry, what? You're, you're not angry with me. You, you love... You love... You love me, of course you do. You're big and powerful, but you love me. God, that makes so much sense. And of course, I understand that now, so you can get back in your no, box. No, God, no, come no. on, God. Get, God, don't wrestle with me. Get in the box. <sighs> yes, I, under, I, I didn't get it before, but now I do. God loves me. He's my heavenly father. And of course, the Bible says that, and he wants... He wants the best for me, doesn't he? Just like any good friend would, he wants the best for me. And that means he's going to be happy with, well, everything I think and say, all my actions. He's going to be really happy with my actions. Basically, the great I am will become just like I am. Brilliant. 
Although, hang on a second. I don't have any answers. Life, death, pain, suffering. I, I don't know what to do with that stuff. A, a God my size just, well, it's just not big enough. God, what have I done? Why have I made you so small? I mean, of course you can answer those questions. You're, you're the great I am, the king of kings. You know about life, death, pain, and suffering. And now, now we're back to the start where you're big and powerful. I'm little old me over here. Where you love me for some reason, yet I keep messing up. And yet you still want to be part of my life. And, well, God, I, I just don't get it, okay? I don't understand it. And I just, I give up. You can't. But, but I want to. You can't understand it. I'm God. There's, there's too much of me for any one person to understand it. So I should just give up then? No. No, of course you shouldn't. Because when you wrestle with who I am and how I want you to live, that's, that's when you get to know me. But God, it would be so much easier if you just fit in that box. <laughs> yeah, it would be. But I'm God. I don't do boxes. But here's the thing, okay, here's the thing, right. When you give up on this box, get rid of it, that's when you'll discover that my love, my power, my majesty, my might is just so much greater than you could ever imagine. When you get rid of the box, well, that's, that's when the adventure begins. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you're saying if I get rid of the box, the adventure begins? Yes. Get rid of the box, the adventure... God, I've got it. I understand. Well, I'm getting rid of that box and I'm getting rid of you. See you later, no, no, God. No, no, Bye. I don't think he's Philly Gold. We'll just have to work on it a bit longer. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye, bye here, ladies and gentlemen. When, uh, when I heard they were doing boxing, I was expecting something quite different to that. Um, we're really lucky today that we're going to have Sara, who's president uh, of the Irish Methodist Conference, who's going to come and help us try and unpack the, the magnificent uh, word of God uh, and the character that is God for us uh, this evening. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to hear some of God's word. And I invite Sandra and Sophie, who are going to bring that for us this evening. Good evening. Uh, just before I read scripture, if you were this morning at the Bible study uh, where Jeff was talking about reading Colossians through a canonical and missional lens, that's something that we do here each and every day at Cliff. And uh, all I ask of you is if you listen to a small voice that might be saying that that's the kind of thing that I would like to do, there's an opportunity for you to do it here. Uh, a few years ago, one of our speakers uh, had a, a a message from God that there was a mechanic in the audience, and that's all she knew. And two weeks later, I had a mechanic in my office coming to me because he thought he was called to come and study at Cliff. Uh, we've got th something for a day, a weekend, a week, a year, two or three. We've got something for you. I'll be in the tent. I'm Sandra Brower, head of academic delivery there. I'll be in the tent talking about courses five to 10 every night. If you're hearing that small voice, I pray that you will come and speak to me. So let's open the word of the Lord together tonight. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 26 and 27. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And our second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our third reading this evening is from John 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Sophie and Sandra, um, and I'm really delighted to welcome Reverend Tsar Yambasu, um, who is here from Ireland. He is the president of the Methodist Church in Ireland, and he's also the first black church leader in Ireland. So we're really, really pleased to have you here today. Um, And I do believe that we have you here for one night and one night only because you are off to a particularly special event tomorrow. Can you tell us where you are headed tomorrow? I'll be heading immediately after I stop speaking here. I'll be heading to London. And tomorrow morning, 8.30, I should be at um, St. Paul's Cathedral for the service uh, for the Queen's uh, King's Platinum Jubilee. Wow, that is amazing. We're really pleased that you could make time to speak to us today. Um, And speaking of the Queen, our theme this year is Jubilee, Rule and Reign. How does that theme speak to you um, in your life? 